The following is a selected video from MasterTheContent.com, where you will find an extensive video library of lectures for a variety of standardized admission tests. We offer over 600 hours of detailed video lectures for a multitude of standardized tests. Use our interactive in-lecture table of contents to find specific topics of interest. Work through numerous in-lecture examples to help you internalize concepts. To learn more, visit MasterTheContent.com. Your career, our passion. So we're just going to move on and we're going to further probe what are the acid base properties of amino acids. Now, amino acids contain both what is a basic amino group and an acidic carboxyl group. Now, because they have a basic group and an acidic group, they are therefore said to be dipolar. Now, although we commonly write amino acids uh, as having an intact carboxyl group and an intact amino group, so something like this, This is actually not the structure in which we'll find most uh, amino acids. The structure is actually dependent on the prevailing pH or the prevailing pH of the environment in which the amino acid is contained. And it seldom actually exists in uh, this neutral form that has what is a neutral and complete intact carboxyl group and a neutral and complete intact amino group right there. So the actual structure is actually dependent on the pH. It's dependent on the pH of the prevailing environment. Now, at physiological pHs, so at a pH of about uh, 7.0, natural amino acids will exist in this dipolar state. So they will tend to uh, exist in a state of having both negative and positive charges. So what happens in this case is that the carboxyl group of the amino acid will actually lose a proton to form a carboxylate ion, and the amino group will be actually protonated form an ammonium ion. So within the same molecule, you have proton loss at the carboxyl group and you have protonation, or proton gain at the amino group. So you have a negative charge and a positive charge within the same structure. And this is actually a very unique structure referred to as a dipolar iron or more accurately as witter ion. That's actually from a German word. So that is what we refer to as a dipolar ion or a zwitter ion. It has both the negative and the positive charges within the same molecule. So this actually appears to be what is an intramolecular uh, acid-base reaction. So it appears to be an intramolecular acid-base reaction. Okay, because in one end, we have our carboxyl group actually losing a proton to form that negatively charged species. And on the other end, we actually have our amino group actually gaining a proton to form that positively charged species, an ammonium ion. So it pretty much resembles what is an intramolecular acid-base reaction, and it results in the formation of a dipolar ion or a zwitter ion, which is a very unique uh, structure. So zwitter ions are actually sometimes called inner salts for that reason. Uh, and unlike simple amphoteric compounds uh, that might only form either the cationic or the anionic species, depending on external conditions, zwitter ions actually simultaneously have both positive and negative states. They have both positive and negative states. So remember what an amphoteric substance is. An amphoteric substance is one that has both basic and acidic properties. Okay? And for that reason, um, you can somewhat see a zwitter ion or a dipolar ion as being amphoteric, but it's kind of different uh, from most amphoteric compounds, which for the most part will only exist in either the cationic or the anionic state. In the case of the Zwitter ion, it has both states and it's a relatively neutral uh, species. Now, this dipolarity that we observe in Zwitter ions, this dipolarity of amino acids actually gives them some pretty unusual properties. And some of them are actually listed on the screen right there. So they tend to have uh, very high melting points. Uh, they tend to be more soluble in water than other organic solvents. And they also have or tend to have larger dipole moments than both simple acids or amines. And as far as their acidity and basicity is concerned, they tend to be less acidic than most uh, carboxylic acids and they tend to be less basic than most amines. So all of those properties can somewhat be related to their dipolar nature. 